Hello doers and welcome back. My name is Jose Ignacio. Now today here at Stealthywood, we have a lot of incoming calls every single day, but we don't want our team to answer calls 24-7. That's why we take advantage of the feature on Odoo's VOIP's advanced dial plan to automate processes and set up plans for all scenarios so that our customers are never left waiting or that they get frustrated. Well, almost never. Some people can never be pleased. Anyways, with dial plans, we can automate plans for certain days or times, like company holidays. We can also allow callers to enter extensions themselves and be transferred automatically using a digital receptionist, so that our call center team doesn't have to be available around the clock. And we can even route callers depending on where they're calling from in the world to maximize efficiency. Today, we're going to learn about the advanced features of dial plans. But if you haven't watched our intro to dial plans video yet, I'd recommend watching it first. Also, I'm going to be showing you how to configure everything through a provider called Axavox. Yours might be different if you're on a different provider, so let's get started. So here I am on the Axavox admin portal underneath Dial Plans. Let's click into the visual editor for the Stealthywood mainline, because I'm going to show you something. So we want to use the digital receptionist feature, which is an element that listens for an extension so that callers can be transferred automatically to the extension of their choice. I want to set this up so the team doesn't have to be on at all hours, but calls still go through at all hours. So the very first thing we need is a menu. So select it from the new element and drag it on over to the top. Now, once we're done, we actually want to double click this. Now here at Stealthywood, we want customers to press seven if they know their party's extension. And we've actually pre-recorded that over here to save time. Remember, audio message is video if you don't know what I just did. And this greeting message would normally be a lot longer than just press seven because there's a lot of options, but we're abbreviating to speed this up. Now, once we're done with that, what we want to do is First, we want to save, and then we're going to connect this box over here. Always save, oh doers. It's one of the most important things. So now when customers call in, they're going to hear a message telling them, press 7 if they know their party's extension, and they'll have 30 seconds till timeout. Great. Now we have to configure what happens when they press 7. So I'm going to select play a file because they need to hear more options. So we're going to hit add, and then we're going to drag this over here, probably closer to the number 7 right there. So let's connect it to that so that we don't forget. Now, I've already created audio that's going to basically tell them, enter your party's extension now. So we actually save time even right there. Now, when a caller presses 7, they'll hear that, basically telling them to press their extension in. With all that done, it's time to add the digital receptionist element. So if I actually go over here to the top, we're going to select digital receptionist and hit add. Great. So let's first connect this, and then I'm going to double tap it in there. Great. The very first thing it gives us is an option for the timeout. Now, the timeout length is the amount of time the caller has to enter in the correct extension before they get disconnected. I'm going to leave it at 30 seconds, though. They have plenty of time to run and find it. We're all set here, so let's also hit save again. Great. All right. Finally, I need to have an audio message as a backup in case the extension they enter isn't correct. So I'm actually going to add another play of file. So we'll go up to the top and hit add once again. Now, why do I want this other play of file? Well, in this case, we're going to choose this is not a valid extension so that they know what they've just typed in isn't a real number. Maybe they've just gone and rogue and it didn't go well. So once that we connect that, would you look at that, Odoers? We have another option right there. Now, I also need to connect the output bubble back to the beginning of the menu so that our call can restart this flow over here. And then once that we're done, we hit save. So for this next part, we've moved ahead into the time conditions visual editor for that dial plan. Now inside of here for the new element, select time condition and hit add. Drag that out over here and connect it. Now double clicking it gives us a couple options. Now here at Stealthywood, our office will be closed on the 4th of July. So we got to set that up. We're going to hit add a date and time. And for the day of the week, we're going to select all. And for the date itself, we're going to select from the 4th to the fourth, and the month has to be July in our case. Then we hit save. Great, perfect. Now I can create two pathways, either true or false. When it's true, it means it's the fourth of July. I want callers to go straight to voicemail. So we're gonna select voicemail up here at the top, and then we're gonna hit add, and then we're gonna connect that. So what happens when it's false though? Well, when it's false or every other day of the year, we can just create a regular flow where we actually want them to go over to the main menu. So we're going to select add and there you have your menu right there. Then once you're done over here, you want to hit save and apply. You're all set. Now this is a really useful feature to plan ahead for days or times when we know that our dial plan needs to change. 
And that is the configuration for time conditions. So up next, I'm in our dispatcher dial plan so that I can show you how to use one to basically direct calls based on region. So inside of here, I'm going to add the dispatcher element over here and then connect it. So what does it do? Well, it basically looks at the incoming phone numbers, country code through regular expressions, and then routes calls accordingly. So let's actually double click in there because we're going to have a few little options right there. We're going to select add a line and we got to start with a name, for example. In our case, I can type US or CA. And our regular expression here has to be something that basically checks for it. So in our case, it's going to be 001-D+. And then we're going to add another one right here. In our case, I can add another line. And in this one, it's going to be something like MX. And what is the country code for that one? Well, it's 52. And this is how you would type that in and do the exact same thing. And once you're done with everything, you basically hit save and you're all set up. Now you can perform a lot more complex patterns to identify and manage numbers with regex. In our case, regular slash rational expressions. For this example, we're going to keep it simple. So now you'll notice I have three outlets and these are the paths to choose from the dispatcher box. Since it always has an option for unknown numbers, it basically always is plus one. If someone calls from the US or Canada, I can direct them over to our Stealthywood customer support group. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to add a call element and then hit add. And as I just stated, this one should be this one. And inside of here, our destination has to be that support group that I talked about. So we're going to pick support. I like that it always auto fills right there. And then we're going to hit save. Great. Now we know where they're going to be headed. Now if they call from a Mexican number, I can direct our call to the Stealthywood sales group. So once again, we'll add another call over here. And then we'll drag our MX right there. Double click in there. And now this one is going to be the one that you guys remember. A nice little sales group and save. All set up right there. And if they're calling from an unknown number or meaning they don't fit into either of these categories, I can once again now instead add a menu just to make it a little bit spicier for them to figure it out. This will give us a lot more options right there so that I could direct them through regular flow. And this concludes our dispatcher flow. And for the final flow that I want to show you, it's configuring an access list. So let's add a new element of an access list and then connect it over here. So what does this do? Well, this allows me to determine what numbers are allowed or denied. Once that we double click in here, let's start our scenario. You have a VIP customer, which is their phone number that we have right there. And they're authorized to go through immediately over to management via what we would do as a new element added as a call. And remember, I said they're authorized. Let's assume for this one, our destination now for that matter is Stefan management. Great. That's all done in there and they'll immediately get connected over there. But what about unknown calls? Well, those can be routed through the regular menu flow by adding, in our case, once again, a menu element in case you don't know where exactly they're coming from. And then they could basically figure out where they need to connect to. But what about people who are refused in our case? Well, the fun thing about them is they could be immediately sent over to a hangup because you don't want to talk to them. So aptly, we do it like that. Now, for all of these examples, you should incorporate these elements into a single dial plan, depending on your needs. I just separated each one just so that you could find them easier. Thank you for watching, Outdoers. Now, let's take a listen to what we've created together. Welcome to Stealthy Wood Office Furniture Company. We are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Thanks for getting in touch. We'll be with you shortly.